And hey guys, welcome back. You're back with the Wandering Mariner. Today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about coastal assignments and how it happens. I know a lot of people have been asking me specifically about this topic. So when you first apply for MSC, they're going to say, do you want to be assigned to the East Coast, to the West Coast, or are you willing to take either? I would say everybody puts in for either because they want to get hired. There's more opportunity, right? I was very West Coast centric, so I put West Coast only. And I got assigned to West Coast only because I needed people to come in to MSC at that time. So out of my indoctrination class, so I was the only one out of like 40 that got assigned to the West Coast. Everybody else was assigned to East Coast. So that's kind of how that goes. Now, if you get assigned to the coast that you didn't really want or you think you want to switch a coast, every year they open it up for coastal transfers. Now, it's all based on how the balance of the fleet is. Do they have enough people assigned to the East Coast and the West Coast and whatnot? And that is whether or not you're going to get it. I know some guys in some ratings that have put in for coastal transfers forever and never got them. But on the flip side, let me tell you, it doesn't really matter what coast you're assigned to at all. <laughs> My first assignment, I called it when I switched over from uh, AB to uh, Ops Chief. I called my detailer and he's, I was like, look, I'm a new Ops Chief. Just wanted to touch base with you, kind of, you know, set some rapport with the guy. And he's like, yeah, great. Sounds great, John. Uh, what what coast or uh he goes uh what are you looking for for an assignment i was like you know i'm not picky at all i go i'll take any ship you got on the west coast i go anything and he was like great boss because you know i don't have no east coast ships even opening up soon so don't even you know i'll call you probably in a week and i'll get you an assignment and i was like great you know i appreciate everything you know come up the phone and talk to the other ops chiefs are in the pool they're like i don't even bother calling the detailer things never work out when you call the detailer <laughs> and i was like well i'm gonna i'm gonna set rapport with him I'm, I'm gonna you know get it figured out so anyways come a friday afternoon a week later i'm in the pool uh the guy that runs the the ops chiefs and deck guys calls me over the intercom and it's like two o'clock in the afternoon and I'm getting ready to sign out and go home for the day or go out for the weekend had plans and uh, he comes to he calls me in and says hey shipmate you got you got some orders and I'm like what <laughs> he's like you're going to the Joshua Humphrey or John Lenthal I was like the Lenthal I go that's the East Coast ship he goes yeah go check out <laughs> I was like what what and i went to call the detailer it's two o'clock in the afternoon in san diego it's five o'clock in the evening they're gone he's gone for the weekend i had to fly out the next morning get to the ship report on saturday it doesn't matter it doesn't matter one iota of your assignment you're gonna go wherever military sea lift command needs you and that's part of the gig you know you can you can hum and him about it and hee-haw, but it ain't going to make a difference, you know. Um, another question about coastal assignments. Some people get wrapped around the wheel about the pay difference because certain jobs make a little bit more on the East Coast than on the West Coast, okay? Uh, but those jobs that make more for base salary, like on the West Coast, I made more in base salary. I want to say like... $5,000 a year more on the West Coast. But on the East Coast, they got paid more in their overtime rate. They were getting like, I want to say like five or six dollars more per hour than I was getting as overtime rate from there. So it, it doesn't matter. So just don't get your wheels wrapped around the axle. It doesn't none of that matters so hopefully hopefully this helps a little bit for you guys that are asking about coasts uh i had another young gentleman ask me you know how do i get assigned to a ship overseas <sighs> all right 
there are no ships that are stationed overseas permanently, okay? Some might go over there for five years, <laughs> but their home port is always going to... They're always going to come back to the States. They're going to come back for maintenance or overhaul or just tour of duties overseas and whatnot. And it's not like the Navy. You don't get housing overseas. There's no, there's no real home ports overseas. You'll visit ports overseas. But really, for the most part, there's a few select ships that are over there. Maybe some uh, submarine tenders that are overseas that you could get assigned to or maybe something in the JHSV programs that spend a little bit more time overseas. But for the most part, there's not a lot of like, you're not going to get a ship stationed out of Singapore and you're not going to get an apartment in Singapore and live there most likely. <laughs> just, just to let you know, it's not, I mean, that's to be in somewhere exotic, you know, it's kind of everybody's dream. Put me on a tropical, beautiful island, you know. And that could happen, I guess. Guam. <laughs> but hope you guys are liking these videos. Hope they're helpful. Make sure you're leaving your comments. And I've gotten a couple emails in from some of you guys. I'm going to put more videos together because I want to... I want to knock out all the birds with one stone. I don't want to spend my whole day on emails and chats and, and whatnot. And no offense, guys, I don't get paid by MSC to recruit. <laughs> Although, MSC, if you want to contact me, I'll probably guarantee you 100 recruits a year and just pay me over six figures. And we could probably work something out with a travel budget and whatnot. But like, subscribe, we'll hit you on the next one.